All right, thanks, um, people who stay into the last, this is the last session of this week, and welcome to the session. <laughs> yeah, after this one weekend. Um, so yeah, the session will talk about service profiling based resource management and scheduling. I'm Jia Den, and this is my colleague Ming Meng, and we're from ByteDance. So for today's talk, um, the overview would be, I'm going to talk about the introduction, like why we're doing this, and how we do the service profiling, um, how we use the profiling into the scheduling, and um, this whole project is open sourced into a project named Catalyst, so Mimo will talk about Catalyst, and I believe some of, guy, some of you guys come here because you went to yesterday's session, Godel Scheduler, and you may wonder how Godel Scheduler and Catalyst, how they work together, and then we'll talk about the future plan. Um, and also, I'll upload, I'll upload the slides after the session. I'll upload to the Kubernetes, like the KubeCon website. Okay, first is the project introduction. So in Binance, um, there are various machine types and workload types in one cluster that we need to manage. We have machine from different, ver uh, different um, vendors or brands and different generator generations in one cluster. And we also have different kind of services running in one cluster, like online services, workload, um, model training and streaming, etc. Ideally, those workload consuming different types of resources should distribute evenly according to all nodes capacity. However, native Kubernetes only supports CPU and memory, as we all know. But there are lots of resources like um, disk I/O, memory bandwidth, network bandwidth, power, etc. Uh, and each resource has its upper limit on each node, saying like we have different machines and different machine generations, they have different um, limits on those resources. So there are cases like workloads scheduled at the same node are say um, memory bandwidth intensive or network memory bandwidth, bandwidth intensive, but they don't consume high CPU or memory. Then the memory bandwidth or the network bandwidth or the other like resources becomes the bottleneck of a performance. Like um, the left side figure shows um, the scheduler should put those workloads on different nodes, so not a single resource is the shortest board of the bucket. On the other hand, unlike CPU and memory, um, customers, they don't have a direct sense of how much resources they're using or how much they should apply for. So we need a way to better describe the workload for better scheduling. Um, going forward, I'll take memory bandwidth as an example. Then the question becomes, how do we describe or identify a workload? What aspects do we need to consider? The first intuitive is the workload, say, um, like what the service is running. Then by analyzing history consumption data, the second is deployment. This deployment is not the Kubernetes deployment, it's more about how we deploy the um, the service, like how many CPU requests, how many memory it requests, and also what envir environment variable it enables, like what feature it enabled, and what plugin it enabled. So we summarize all of those two um, deployment here. Um, and then um, to better describe the profile and to use the same profile across different container sizes, we calculate a core memory bandwidth when processing history data. As the figure shows, when using service plus deployment as the identifier, we observe similar data on different clusters. So we can use the profile of one workload on cluster A to guide the workload, uh, to, to guide the scheduling of the same workload on cluster B in case like one of the workload is being only scheduled on cluster A before, but later it will be scheduled on other clusters. Then when calculate the predicted usage, we multiply the by core value with the actual pod CPU request. However, we found exceptions over here. The memory bandwidth capacity of a physical NUMA on some old machine is too small, which limits the performance. So machine type is another factor that we need to consider when describing a profile, mainly the memory bandwidth of the CPU itself and the specification of memory used by the machine. For example, DDR4 3200 is significantly slower than DDR5 4800. Then what is the relationship between those machine models? 
From analyzing the historical data, which observe memory bandwidth usage across different machine generations, is approximately equal to machine physical memory module bandwidth. Therefore, we will multiply a coefficient when using profiles across different models to compensate the performance difference in memory bandwidth dimension on different models. Um, take an example, and those are all illustrative data here. Um, say we have three kind of machine, M1, M2, and M3, and each has um, a physical memory module bandwidth of 1K, 2K, and 4K. Then we could have a matrix over there where, um, say, um, like the two, number two here, is meaning M2 over M1 is two. So suppose we have a historical data for workload W's profile on running on M1 is A per core. Then um, we could have an estimated of the same workload W that need the resources of 2A per core on running on M2. And if a workload has a historical data, then we'll directly use that. Otherwise, say, um, otherwise we'll just calculate the predicted value. Say if a workload has both value of M1 and M2, then we'll calculate the M3 based on M1 and M2 and take the max. Then let's take a look how scheduling looks like. So from the beginning, um, Data Lake collects history usage from all clusters and computes the key value store, where key is the identifier that we talked before, is the workload plus, like the service, plus deploy plus machine, and the value is the memory bandwidth per core. Then in each cluster, the profile reader computes the workload predicted usage for all the machine types. Those profile values are stored in a custom resource SPD service profile descriptor, which captures information about a service workload, including the memory bandwidth value. And this is an example of how an SPD looks like with a memory bandwidth. And notice it's, uh, it is per core and also it has a timestamp and also the window is hourly. So for each hour, we have a usage for like across all of those resources. Then upon scheduling, the scheduler knows node resource capping and resource sum of all the workloads that currently scheduled on the node and more specific on each NUMA. The scheduler also knows nodes machine type so it can calculate the coming um, workloads predicted memory bandwidth usage. The scheduler scores each node from zero to 100 based on the NUMA with the most remaining memory bandwidth on a node. So take an example here for this matrix, say we have three nodes and say for node zero, after assuming we schedule the coming pod on this node, then um, the node with the most, the NUMA with the most memory bandwidth is 1K. Then for node one, say it's have um, 1500, and then for node two, it has 2K, then their score would be 0, 50, 100. Since node two has the highest score, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> then the coming pod would be scheduled on node two. Of course, schedule need, the scheduler needs to combine other resources rating to finally choose a node. But like for now, we just take this one resource aspect. Let's have a closer example here. Say in a cluster, we have two empty nodes, node A and node B, and each node has um, four NUMA. And then we have two, three types of workload. One is the larger workload, which um, is greater than a NUMA limit. Then we have a medium workload, which is greater than half of the NUMA limit, but smaller than the entire NUMA limit. And then we have a really small workload, which is smaller than half of the NUMA limit. Then we schedule the three large size pods and one small size pod one by one on node A, like we specifically schedule them on node A. Then we schedule three large and one medium one by one on node B. So each pod would take in one NUMA. And then when we scatter, schedule another small workload, this workload would go to node B NUMA three as this would result in, in the most remaining NUMA for um, not only among node A and node B, but also across the other NUMAs. Well, the SPD, so we highly use SPD to carry the information of the resource we need. And um, the SPD service profile descriptor is implemented 
on the open source project Catalyst. And then my colleague Mimon will introduce Catalyst and other service profiling based on um, practical scenarios. Okay, why not I will introduce the Catalyst resource management system. The best for the uh, focus on is SPD framework. Catalyst is a resource uh, management enhancement system built on Kubernetes. The NAND Catalyst is inspired by Catalyst in chem chemical reactions. Uh, as the aims to provide advanced resource management capabilities that enhance Kubernetes native fun functionalities by extending Kubernetes APIs like QS class, HPA, VPA, and uh, custom metrics. Uh, Catalyst enables more advanced grant uh, resource management. Now, let's talk about the SPD framework which is a key component of Catalyst. The SPD controller measures the life cycle uh, of SPDs and allows various plugins to be registered. These plugins predate from different data sources like the historical data source, predict data source, or custom data source to dynamically update the SPD information. Uh, next, I will introduce the three practical applications of SPD in Catalyst. Okay, the first case, uh, load aware balance scheduling. Uh, the native scheduler primarily relies on port resource re requests for scheduling. A major drawback of this approach is that uh, it ignores the historic load date this can lead to resource hot spots in cluster where certain nodes become overload, affecting the overall performance and stability. To address these issues, we uh, propose load a real balance scheduling. The scheduling method optimizes a placement based on historical data with the de design. Uh, it achieves a better balance of resource usage uh, across the class, avoiding bottlenecks uh, caused by overload nodes. The key here is uh, that we use resource profiling to optimize port placement. Okay, let, let's look at the architecture on the right, which is sim similar to a memory bandwidth aware scheduling. Uh, we introduced before the schedule will watch the SPD update event and send out the hourly date of all the workload SPDs in each node as node portal. When a port grid, the schedule receives the port grid from the API server and then the schedule will add the port's SPD date into node portal and take the max of all date or hourly date around with predefined uh, threshold to filter out suitable nodes and select the node which is the most approaching to the target usage config configuration to place the port. Um, in summary, uh, not, not a well uh, balanced scheduling helps us make more uh, efficient usage of resource uh, enhance the overall class efficiency and reducing the occurrence of resource ho hot pores. Okay. The second, second case, uh, intelligent HPA. Uh, in microservice architecture, dynamic scaling is essential for maintaining systems performance and stability. Intelligent HPA uh, includes three key features that makes scaling smarter, faster, and more precise. Uh, firstly, it's ser service profiling. Dynamic uh, SPDs are variables at hourly or final granularity uh, can be transformed into uh, exchange metrics with the metrics adapt. Uh, this matrix enable tennis and um, precise scaling actions. 
makes scaling operations more respons responsive and accurate. Uh, second is to matrix. Tra traditional HPA relies solely on native matrix for scaling decisions. Intelligent HPA, however, integrates uh, both pre predict and native matrix. The two uh, matrix approach enhance scalability, in ensuring system stability while making the scaling process more flexible and robust. Lastly, proactive scaling. Lacking predictive uh, matrix, uh, proactive Proactive scaling adjusts workloads ahead uh, and anticipate uh, demand spikes by for forecasting uh, demands. Uh, resource can be scaled up uh, preemptively, uh, minimizing response delays and ensuring readiness without uh, waiting for traffic surges. Oh, okay, the third case. Uh, in the last case, we are discussing online offline collocation, which aims to op optimize resource utilization by collocations online and offline workloads. To achieve this, we, we introduce the other node level catalyst framework QM. Uh, first, uh, let's look at the QM, which Stands, stands for QRS Resource Manager. QAM has two main responsibilities. First, it uh, manages the retention of QAM plugins, uh, like CPU uh, QAM plugins, uh, memory QAM plugins, and network QAM plugins, and enforce real-time resource allocations and adjustments for the standard uh, CRI interface, uh, like update the container resource, uh, such as it can up update resource such as uh, CPU set or memory set. It also provides resource uh, allocation suggestion to the topology manager uh, as hint provider to help optimize the distribution of resource. Like uh, CAM plugins can use SPD uh, data to understand the re resource requirements of online workloads, such as a sample CPU utilization threshold to calculate how many resources the online workload need, and uh, allocate the remaining resource to offline tasks without impacting the uh, performance of online service by CAM framework. Okay. Introduce you. Okay. Um, next, I'll talk about some future plans and improvement of the SPD and profiling. Um, the first is to have more accurate profiling strategy. Right now, we mostly take the max of um, all of those data, and this is more of a conservative strategy. Um, to have better, um, to have better um, resource utilization, we could have uh, like a better like math mathematic model. The second is um, profiling is an estimate of the historical data, which is very likely to be different from the actual usage. So we can have a real-time consumption for rescheduling, uh, which is empowered by Godel. Later, um, right now, um, we have this strategy and we already have the memory bandwidth and network bandwidth, but uh, it could be applied to other resources level, like I just said, disk IO, power, et cetera. So this is the Catalyst REPL QR code, and it's one of, um, one of the project of KubeWorf, which is the open source of ByteDance Kubernetes. Um, yeah, feel free to take a look over here and play around. Um, that's for today's session, and we're happy to take any questions. Sorry. Of course, of course, yeah. That's our next big team plan, I would say. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, we have different we have different pipelines to monitor. So um, the historical data is one of the pipeline, and we have another pipeline to have the real time data. That's for the mostly for the rescheduler, because rescheduler would need like more accurate um, real time. Well, if no more questions, we can call it a day and call it this weekend. And yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us.